Hello, I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Today's episode is about restoring a classic 1940s Marks 999 locomotive and train set. I come across this picture right here, digging through the Google machine, and I'm like, I, I've, um, I think I got that. And I sure enough, I rooted around and it was in one of them vintage store haul videos. You might have seen it. And I'm like, well, now it's just time to fix this one up. The 999 locomotive, first die cast locomotive that Marks made. They had it for a long time. Bulletproof, this thing, but it's ugly. This is this is what it looked like, you know, when I started on it. Just, huh. So we're gonna fix this up. We're gonna paint it, because, you know, it's it's only, it's only a $20 locomotive, so it's not like I'm ruining a piece of history. Follow along with me on this journey of getting this old girl back on the rails. Yes. Somebody's really went through the effort. They painted all kinds of pretty stuff on there, but you know, it's a, it's gloss black. It, the wheels are gold. It's like, uh, so we got to pull the electrics out of it, get this prepped to go into the ultrasonic cleaner and get this paint taken off. One screw on this side. One screw over here. This should drop out all of this. Mm, yeah. Get right in there and work on that. I should test this and see if it even works. Uh, somebody's. That's actually made out of brass, from what I understand. These railings come off. Straighten those two up right there. Weird working on these things with such big tools. I used to having to use little micro stuff. Straighten that one. Pull it out of the pilot. There's cotter pins holding it in right there and right there. Those are meaty ones. Those aren't just cheapy aluminum-y ones. Those are really nice. Wow. And these wires are also bent here in the cab. There it is. Hold it back just enough. Pull that out. Do the same over here. Unbolt this trailing truck. Get this headlight assembly out. Mm, oh, it's even got paint smeared all over it. So there's the hand railings removed and the little cotter pins that were in there holding that in. There's nothing left on this to take out. This is riveted on. I'd really like to get this number board out of the front. What can a guy do? Got this hook right here. I can reach in there and I can get it behind it. Oh, there we go. Right on the floor. Piece of metal, this was just spray painted white, hiding out up in behind there. So it must have been held on with a little bit of glue or something like that. So we can clean that up too. Get that all whooped into shape. Ultrasonic cleaning time. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Good Lord. It's all wrinkly. The paint all came off quite nicely with just a little bit of toothbrush, a little bit of effort, and some time. Got her down to a nice, nice clean shell. A couple coats of some semi-gloss spray paint, a little drying time. She might come out looking really, really nice. Well, just as I expected, this runs, and I knew I wouldn't have to do anything to it. Pull it out of the body before I tested it, and of course, some guys got to get crabby. Forward and reversers. Reversing unit's just a little sticky. But my biggest problem is I got to clean up these wheels. I don't really want to put this in the, I don't want to put the whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. That'll ruin the could ruin the windings on the electromagnets. I'm gonna have to use some brake cleaner on there, some brake fluid, and Q-tips, and dig it all out. And I need to get this back to its original color because that's ugly. And of course this motor, when we go to service it up, be very straightforward. That brake clean made that paint fall off there. It it did. These were all painted, it cleaned, and all the grease, everything on the inside, I just... I went hard on it. I went hard. Just to see, you know, I mean, it's all metal, so it should be all right. And I do want to service this area up here. Quarter inch nut driver. I looked around at taking these brushes out and I just decided I'm going to do it like this. I'm just going to take the brush holder off. I don't want to pry these springs up. It just, bleh. some guys do it that way. I'm not, I'm not, I can't do it. This thing's actually had other ideas in mind. One of them is not coming off. Holy nervousness. 
Ooh. Ah, I gotta tell you, them brushes, they're there. That armature is amazing looking. There, there ain't hardly nothing a guy's got to do to that. We've came all this way though. Fiberglass pencil. Just gonna, you know, I opened it up. Let's do something. Try our best to get these brushes cleaned up. Blech. Ugh. Yep. Yep. Just using simple mineral spirits. Get inside the brush holders. Get the little tubes in there cleaned out. Sometimes a Q-tip is a little too thick. Strip it down some. So you can get in there and root around a little bit. I guess I, mean, I pulled the, the brush springs out and I bent them. They're off over here onto the side. I didn't really bend them. I just lifted them up and then kind of pushed it till it's sitting right here. Because these aren't, these aren't quite as easy to feed in as other things that I've worked on. Let's so reinstall this brush holder and armature bushing. Put a brush in. Time it up with the spring. Here's the spring sitting right there. And... Yep, that's pretty straightforward. Yep. So those are all cleaned up. This outer armature bushing has got this felt wick on it. So you can give it some loving right here. That'll keep it lubricated up. Brass bushing back over here on this output shaft. If you look down in here, you can see that there's brass axle bushings in there. Now these back ones, they're loose. And these front ones, they're, they're even looser. Now, I suppose a guy back in the old, well, who knows if they sold replacement bushings for those or not. This is excessive, but it's all we got. So we're going to lube it up and we're going to get another 50 years out of it. Coming in here, getting these axle bushings from the inside. I guess the squirrels are back. I'm going to want to use this multi-purpose synthetic grease. Put a little on these gears right there. You put it in, and of course it, sp it spreads it around. It looks like I'm putting a big gobby gob on, but as this rolls around and does its thing, it spreads it out. I bet this idler gear right here, it's gonna need just some love right up in there. Yo. I'm gonna give it just a little taste on this pin right here for this pickup shoe. Wipe off any excess. I'm gonna say that we're ready to go for another 40, 50 years. Oh. Yeah, she's quiet. Another episode of Classic Model Trains. How about another classic model? You guys know who this is? Type it down in the comments below. A lot of these cars have got a phenomenal amount of built up just grease on them. Like they were hanging out close to a kitchen and just got greasy dirt or something. I've been able to clean them up with just the old scrub brush and some Dawn dish soap. But I'm gonna have to go ahead and scrub up all of these cars. They've all just got some funk to them. And then I think I'm going to wax them. Put a little shine on them so they're prettier looking. Yeah, that's what I need to get done. I just like to get in there with a little Dawn dish soap, grab up a toothbrush from the bathroom. Don't get a hard one. Soft, soft bristles, gentle ones. I've never had any problem with any of these decals or paint colors coming off yet. So you just got to get in there and just give it some. So how many guys are out there saying, hey, that's a tin car. That's made out of metal. That, that, that's going to rust. Well, no, because you try it off. You try it off right away. Get it dry. And then you're not going to experience any oxidation of unpainted metal products. You got you to get it clean. Too bad you can't see the sink water. It has got a definite funk to it. Yeah. Oh, sure. See if we can get that shine, keep that shine going with some, some car wax on it. Mm -hmm. Well, now that it's all dry, it, it lost that sheen. Dang it. Let's see if some of this will bring it back around. We'll just do this half so we can do a before and after. Well, let's just see here. You know, I got to say that there's not much difference there. I guess they don't use uh, really glossy paint or it's just been faded for so many years. I really, I really wanted to bring these back around, but... That looks about as good as it's going to get. This is the wax side. This is the before side. I mean, there's just a slim little difference. Just washing them is about as best as it's going to get, I guess. Well, everything's reassembled from, from the painting process. When these are all apart, I used a little Dremel and I cleaned up the wheels and the axles and shined up all the stuff that could be shined up. 
I do have to say, mm, no. This calf color, it, it doesn't match the color that's putting out. Semi-gloss, that's almost a full-on gloss in my book. And since it's a paint and primer, I learned, don't, don't do that. No matter how clean this metal was, I had washed it up after, you know, stripping all the old paint off, let it dry properly, and it just has got a very, very poor finish to it. So I, the next time I do this, it'll be a two-step paint and primer, not, not this. Need a gloss for the decals to stick to, and then I'm going to dull coat it, you know, with a clear. Taking off this front steam chest was certainly easy because it's just got these two tabs right there. So of course, you know, you fight getting this all lined up, but then you just, you just put the steam chest in, and then you reach in there with a pair of needle nose pliers and you give these tabs a little quarter turn just to like a like this holds it all together these are nice to work on they really they really are well this is what our painting and detailing is looking like i had to put about three coats of black on this thing and it is not setting up it's been like four days now so i am going to put it in the oven at about 200 degrees for maybe half an hour Maybe 175, maybe 150, I don't know. And I'm gonna to try to get that to set up so I can touch it without putting thumbprints in it. We're gonna put some decals on it, 999, get the front, get all the pieces, parts put back on it. So slowly but surely, starting to look really nice. Yep. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's all going well. Picked up some of these micro scale decals. So I can cut out the little nine nines that I got that I need down here and apply them one at a time on each side. Get our decal a soaking. Get some micro set placed on. Decals are placed in. They've had a little little bit of opportunity to set up some, so now we're going to go to the micro saw, and we're going to just give them a little little painting of the of the micro saw. And this will set them in and make them look real nice. Now she's got to sit for eight hours. Don't even look at it very hard, or the decal smear is what I've been told. Well, after all the fancy painting was done on this thing, I went ahead and sprayed it with some dull coat. So it, you know, doesn't look like a brand new model or something like that. And I was really happy. I built new hand railings for it, got it all assembled, and I was going to run it out there on the, you know, on the track, you know, like we do. Very, very first thing I did, right, right on the ground, right on the ground, nicked up the running boards here, nicked up the top of the cab. What do you do? It's all sealed now. It's, it's, oh, Ah, my luck, I tell you. So I made the oval just a little bit smaller so, you know, it's not on the edge. And we ran it. So let's take a look at it.